apologize that this face is demanding your attention, but let's dive into creativity. Um, so it's a big idea that we all just heard that AI might someday win a, a Nobel Prize, the, the Turing test for science, we might call it. Well, what can we do right now? Uh, there's, we can, we are moving towards a world in which machine learning is playing an increasingly large role in scientific discovery. A few years ago, for example, I was reading papers about wage gap written by labor economists and, and was curious about a question that I didn't feel was being answered. Why do women make different labor choices than men? So I built a number of web crawlers that crawled across the websites of 60,000 companies and collected data from images of the leadership team uh, to natural language processing of their quarterly reports. And from this massive data, we made a new discovery. It turns out younger women commit more hours to their work when there are established women in leadership roles. An interesting and unique discovery. It took me two days to collect that data using my NLP and image analysis. Can you imagine even five years ago, 10 years ago, certainly, how many years and the, the size of the army required to collect all of that information? And in fact, just over the last year or two, we've seen publications involving analysis of the innovation in every dissertation written in the United States since 1972, 1 1.2 million papers analyzed for innovation, every biotech patent uh, analyzed to see the impact of the identity of the inventors on the kinds of things being invented, and most recently, a look at the uh, structure of scientific collaboration, the images of visual artists and the screenplays of filmmakers to look at what produces streaks in elite creative performers. All impossible research without artificial intelligence to do the initial data collection using very sophisticated criteria like how innovative a paper is. We've also looked at how artificial intelligence in my lab can actually improve the collective intelligence of groups. For example, we analyzed large online classes, 30,000 students, and initially found something kind of surprising. If you broke those classes up into small cohorts of five to 10 learners, rather than a giant undifferentiated social network, the students actually learned more, even if those cohorts were random. But what if we use machine learning to pair people together? Let's say based on personality. Turns out pairing people for similarity doesn't improve their learning, but pairing them for difference does. Building strategic teams of students who share some similarities, but importantly have differences. Again, imagine the combinatorics of doing that across 30,000 people by hand. But with machine learning, we begin to make progress. And over the last year, while well, everyone has been in lockdown, we've been able to analyze the same thing with scientific and research teams to see the same emerging patterns that you can actually build models to understand which people will be most creative together. And in theory, engineer those teams to maximize their creativity by reducing redundancy in the things that make us different. Finally, how about directly stimulating creativity in the brain? So I have a number of companies in the neurotechnology space. In fact, when I was interviewing for grad school, I told people I wanted to build cyborgs. Boy, did they think I was crazy. But now we live in a world where technologies are beginning to interact directly with our brains, such as deep brain stimulation. Um, and neuroprosthetics, replacing limbs with artificial robotic limbs that directly communicate with the brain. Is there a neuroprosthetic for creativity? Well, this is very early days for that field of research, but it turns out using technologies such as transcranial alternating current stimulation and direct current stimulation, targeting specific parts of our brain, such as aspects of our prefrontal lobes or our insular cortex, we can actually induce disinhibition, allowing people to explore more ideas, come up with more unique uses for an unknown device or more meanings for different types of words. And we can also stimulate other regions 
and help people with their lateral thinking, allowing them to think of different solutions to similar problems. Now, that isn't specifically about machine learning, but it turns out our brains are so individual, so heterogeneous, that in fact, machine learning is almost a fundamental requirement to tailor these technologies to a specific person's brain. Uh, if I wanted to induce your creativity using these sorts of technologies, we need to build a closed loop that actually finds just the right alternating current to sync up the right rhythms in your brain. And it's so exciting to be part of a moment uh, to have started a career where people thought I was joking when I said I wanted to make cyborgs and to now be able to look at people that perhaps have brain trauma or degenerative diseases and know maybe we can add a bit of richness back into their life. Now, what about scientists, uh, the scientist AI, the independent creator? Well, this is the cutting edge of the whole idea of artificial creativity. And in my lab, we're looking at two different projects, one with very young learners and the other looking at the effects of chronic stress on things like heart disease and major depression. And in both cases, much as we just heard about, our systems are running continuous, autonomous, real world experiments. But now imagine we're not just running autonomous lab experiments, these are affecting real people's lives. So we have to be incredibly careful. The core discovery here is using natural language processing to understand what are unique in people's lives, looking for correlations with longer term outcomes. And then our system introduces tiny little nudges. For example, for the learners, we reach out to their parents and offer them suggestions. Do you have 15 minutes free tonight? How about you play this game with your child? And in each case, our system is explicitly testing a causal relationship. It has hypothesized from the correlations that is emerging in its own data sets. Uh, and we're looking in the same way to see how personality mediates the effects of chronic stress on long-term life outcomes. Small nudges, causal chains, all done autonomously. But at its heart, the questions being asked, the understanding of the relationships are still fundamentally human. We're moving into a world in which AI is not artificial, but augmented intelligence that is supporting an entire new generation of scientists to go out and be curious explorers of the world. And maybe what we're going to see is it allows us to expand what it means to be a scientist, to not just explore the lab, but the natural world in real time and allow citizen scientists to participate in that discovery. Augmented intelligence is the near term uh, AI impact on science. And I'm looking for that day, maybe not where the AI wins the Nobel prize, but where the uh, awardees thank the artificial intelligence that was the crucial tool in their discovery.